Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the Murdoch DeFi YouTube channel. And in today's video, we have a pretty cool uh, AMA with a new protocol. They're called Fathom. Uh, they're getting ready to launch, I believe, towards like the middle of January. So not too far away, but still some time to get in and, and learn about what they have going on. Um, they are one of the projects that's going to be launching on Command Swap. Uh, they're getting audited in KYC with True Seekers, so they're checking all those boxes. But we had kind of a, a pretty interesting uh, AMA. And essentially what this protocol is, is they're taking bits and pieces from different types of protocols that obviously did not work in the past. Um, so their goal is to kind of structure things differently. Um, it's essentially a token that you buy, you stake the token, but the parameters in which you stake and how rewards are paid out um, are very unique and it's super interesting. Um, one of the biggest things that I learned from them was that they plan on having uh, two or three streams of revenue producing revenue from day one of the protocol launching. Uh, they're going to be having uh, essentially like a fair launch, which allows you to be able to get tokens and stake them without being subject to a bunch of taxes. Um, I tried to ask some questions that I, I felt as an investor uh, I would like to know the answers to. And I also tried to, to make it an AMA where it's not just question and answer, question and answer. Um, and hopefully it's not super boring, uh, but uh, that sometimes is the case with AMAs, right? Um, I know it's rather long, but let's go ahead and jump into it. Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Murdoch DeFi YouTube channel. And today we have a pretty cool AMA lined up for you guys. Uh, we have Sergey and Bishop here from Fathom, uh, which is a new protocol that they're, they're, I mean, they're really kind of doing a whole bunch of stuff differently that at least I haven't um, seen in the DeFi space, which is pretty cool that new stuff is coming into play. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna kind of go off the cuff and not do it a very like strict AMA style where it's like question, answer, question, answer. Um, we're going to try to condense as much information as we can. And I think that we have where they have something to uh, like kind of like a demo or walk through to show us towards the tail end. Um, but guys, thanks for coming here on the channel. Happy to uh, happy to have you. Hello, thank you so much for inviting us on and to kind of talk about our new protocol. Like you said, it's a it's very different from a lot yeah. of the other things that are out there right now. So we're kind of going with a new way. So we are fathom a new way. Right. And that's kind of like your guys is your motto, right? Yep. Yep. That's our little cool. tagline. We went through a lot of different ones and that one just basically made the most sense. Right. right. <laughs> so I, I kind of had, I had the opportunity to, to kind of talk with you guys um, a few days back leading up to today. And, you know, you, you sent me over like the information to take a look at. Um, and I noticed that your guys' white paper was like 30 pages long. Um, and then we got to like having a conversation and it became a little bit easier to understand just by talking to you guys rather than, you know, spending a bunch of time trying to scroll through this white paper and figure it out on my own. Mm -hmm. right. So that's what, that's kind of the basis of, of the direction that, that I wanted to go today. So that way people can watch this and have a good idea. And then on their own, go after they watch the video and read through the white paper, jump into your guys' community and ask questions if they if they have them, right? Um, so, yeah, so can you guys kind of just give me, um, I guess let's kind of start with, with your guys' background and, and what made you want to create something on your own. Sure, so my background is I was, uh, I went to college, I got my bachelor's degree in neuroscience and a minor in chemistry and went forward on to uh, doing kind of the sales gig until I worked my way up to head of a small company from for Israeli medical device company in the American branch and did that for about a year until, you know, COVID hit and you know if there's still more traveling and I also had some health issues and it kind of just landed me into DeFi where I was a had the time to kind of really invest and just kind of saw as we all see this light at the end of the tunnel and got very interested in it um it really uh just kind of took me by storm and 
So that's where I met, met Sir Jay, and we've been working on the past year and a half on this protocol. So, Sir cool. Jay. Yeah, I, um, so actually, and we were just talking about this. I actually yeah. got a degree in computer networking out of out of high school, and learned that without experience, work experience, you can't get hired. Um, <clears throat> went back to school um, for aviation, but some other decisions kind of left. But then um, I did finish my so I have a degree in business as well. Um, and then with basically with DeFi, it's um, yeah, Safe Moon brought me in. Because it was okay. intriguing, and I, I saw the massive gains, which was so much more exciting than what was happening in the stock market. Mm. So I kind of shifted over, <laughs> um, <clears throat> and of course, you know, I bought Safe Moon at the all-time high, pretty much. Um, luckily, I got out before it continued to drop for too long. Um, yeah. Started also looking around. You know, Coin Market Cap became my friend because I started looking at the ones that just launched. Like Aqua Goat was one I got into, which turned out to be pretty good. Uh, but, you know, every single one of these, they all wind up following the same fate. Mm -hmm. where they, they launch. And well, back then, coin market cap had an effect much more than it does now uh, from what I've seen, at least. But, yeah, they, they launch, they go up, they come down, marketing kicks in, they go crazy and then hit all time high and then forever just continue to drop off into nothing. And everybody who got in at that all time high or even afterwards generally loses money. Um, yeah. And, and I think that that kind of almost leads us into um, like the reason, or at least that I, th I believe that's what you guys are telling me is like the, the reason why is because you kind of like what what birthed fan, Fathom is, is um, you know, just kind of learning from from a bunch of different projects, because as we get into it, you're going to kind of if you're watching this, you're going to kind of start to understand that there are they're taking bits and pieces from different types of protocols and like kind of tying everything into it together and hopefully for the better. Right. Yeah. And it's based on like, okay, why did this project fail and dig kind of into it? I mean, I, I learned very well how to read all the transactions. I fully understand how the automated market makers work and the different ways to um, essentially manipulate them. And um, yeah, so I was just, I was just, trying to see how how everything was failing because let's face it the easiest thing to do in DeFi is lose your money and so right. the goal right. was to set out to create um, a system that would be fair for all investors and fully sustainable using basically a combination of tokenomics and the way the system is managed and that's what created fathom got it so, so then let's kind of let's kind of jump into it. Is there is there kind of an easy way for you guys to give us um, like a general overview or like kind of like an elevator pitch, if you will? I don't want to do it an injustice, but um, yeah. I, I guess I can take a swing at this one real quick, and it starts at our beginning again. Like we we're talking about how we wanted to get into this, and what we really wanted to do at the beginnership was give ownership to the investors. We, we were originally going to invest into token, uh, you know, coin miners such as Bitcoin, Gadana, and Ethereum before it did the merge. Um, that's how long we've been working on this. And we wanted to try to create some type of ownership for the investor while also creating a circular ecosystem. So, and that was our main goal was the circular ecosystem that allows us to support the token externally with the miners and also give the people some type of ownership in that as well. Yeah. No, yeah, that makes sense. And and I think I think for me, uh, something that I've been trying to stick to, like even just going into into this new year, um, when I'm looking at uh, like a specific project that I might want to invest in, um, I'm typically looking for like three pieces of information. Right. Um, the first is like how how is the protocol generating revenue? And, uh, and do you guys have proof of it? Uh, and then also, um, mm -hmm. well, how much money am I going to make, right? Uh, what does that look like? So I can strategize accordingly. And then also, is the is the team looking to, to KYC? So let's jump into that that first piece, the, the, gener the generation of revenue. And I believe that you guys plan on being able to, to gen generate revenue for the protocol from day one. Is that correct? Yeah, that's actually our, our main focus because right. at the end of the day, 
if you don't generate revenue, then you're going to fail. That's just how it works. You're not going to have the hype bringing people in forever. And so that's our main focus is to utilize proof of staking um, protocols, you know, such as um, validators, nodes, um, even we've got a, a trading bot now that we're going to utilize to generate as much revenue as we can. And that revenue that we're generating will go to buy back our own token and refill our rewards pool. Okay. And so we'll be just, especially once we need it, we'll have our own bot buying pressure hitting the chart. Yeah. So, you you mentioned uh, you meant, mentioned you mentioned this rewards pool. So can we can we uh, I guess kind of go into like a little bit of the the tokenomics and and what that looks like because um, I think that that's important. I think that that's one thing that you know that kind of piggybacks on the fact that this is something that we haven't seen before, right? So yeah, absolutely. So the rewards pool um, it's called the ocean. It's going to start with fifty percent of the supply. And okay. those will be given out on a on a consistent basis. Uh, basically, a small percentage of that pool will be sent out every 15 minutes to everybody who is staked. So we're not giving out to everybody who wants token, just who is staked. Hmm. Um, it's kind so of like not... your token's mineable. Right. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so that's how, but then the real difference is how we calculate the rewards. Um, Whereas every other system that I've seen, at least, it's based on the number of tokens that you you stake. But what our system does is it captures the US dollar value when you stake your tokens. And a dividend token is sent to your wallet based on that US dollar value. Okay. What this, yep. So what, and the, the whole reason behind that was, well, like I said before, if you buy the top, you're gonna, or even after it's hit that all time high, you're going to lose, lose your money because they just, drop down so in this scenario if you do catch it on the down you know the downtrend um you buy and stake that investment value that you put into it is captured and your rewards are forever going to be calculated based on that value right so stay say say the token launches let's just say at 50 cents and it spikes up to a dollar and i buy in at a dollar and i stake at a dollar but it drops then it drops back down to let's just say the the launch price of 50 cents um so i'm still getting what you're saying is i'm still getting rewards based on what the price of the token was when i staked it so yeah so let's say that you bought fathom and then you staked a thousand dollars worth of fathom at the top okay right then that's what you would receive is a thousand mass and that's what you would receive token uh rewards on is based on that thousand dollars not the amount of fathom that you have but the amount of mass that you have right so you have you have essentially you have two different tokens well kind of right you have the the main token which is, is it fathom yes okay and then you have this other token called mass which i'm sure to to make people aware this has nothing to do with momentum right correct Okay. We, we I'm sure you this, guys get that a ton. We named this back in like March or April, so it's been okay. massed to us yeah. well before momentum even came on the, in the picture. <laughs> okay, so let's so like I said, we have the regular token, which you can buy and sell on the open market, uh, and then we have this mass token. So what is how does this mass token work? Well, first off, I do want to be clear: this mass token, it's every staking protocol has a dividend token. It's just never discussed or talked about because if you stake a thousand tokens, you receive a thousand of these in your wallet. It just tracks it's just, so that the system can track the amount of rewards you get. Hmm. But because okay. we've changed it to representing the value of your tokens at the time of staking, it becomes actually very important for our entire system and the operation and what it actually means as people come in and leave, essentially. Hmm. Um, so that was what I wanted to start with. And can you repeat your question though? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, uh, I mean, well, we kind of we kind of understand what the the mass token is. So it's yeah. kind of just like a, a dividend tracking token, right? Yes, or, sorry. Riveted, geez, that was a tongue twister for me. Dividend <laughs> tracking token. Um that that will essentially and, and, and I know that there's there's more that goes into it for you guys, but 
what people would typically see is just that, right? Like there's no other use case or utility behind it. That is simply just telling the protocol how much rewards that you're given based on the amount of um, mass you have. Yes. Right, 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 right. The mass uh, you have compared to the total amount, essentially. Okay. And, and, and w what else does that token do? <laughs> so you can look at mass as actually being a, um, to the total mass as our total liability for our entire payout system. Cause okay. we do, we are going to aim for like a 1% daily payout. Um, shows that actually a long time ago, but it's, it's a very common amount and it does generate its own hype hmm. for that kind of payout. Um, so if we're, if we, if, if a million mass exists and we're paying out 1% and we're sending out $10,000 worth of fathom tokens every single day. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, that's one that that's like its main representation, but what it means for you, again, if you have that thousand mass where you're going to receive $10 worth of tokens per day, the real magic happens though, when people unstake and sell out. So normally dividend tokens all get burned and they're just gone. But what we've done is only 75% are going to get burned. The other 25% are going to re be reflected to all of the other stakers. And so what this means is as people leave and you stay in there, the number of mass you have is actually going to increase as you receive those reflections. So, so, so people almost, it's almost, it, it, what it kind of sounds like it's almost beneficial if people start to leave the protocol to the people that are staying stage, right? Yes. Okay. And we know that's completely backwards from everything else. Right. It's beneficial to the protocol because our total liability gets lower and it's beneficial to each staker because your rewards increase. Yeah. It's pretty neat how that all works out and it's all because it's based on the value. Um, and yeah, we are slightly concerned that at some point we will have some of the larger holders trying to fund the hell out of us to get others to leave because they know their rewards will increase. Right. And well, and well, I think it, I think it's important too, because I, I've never been a part of a project where they don't somehow run into some type of FUD. Right. And it oh, usually, it usually causes a problem. So um, if, if a protocol were to, to kind of plan in advance for that, knowing it's probably a likely chance that it will happen, um, and it's that kind of sounds like that's what you guys kind of understand, right? Oh, we know we're not going to be immune to all the norm, what normally is bad for protocols. One of them mm -hmm. is everybody's selling out. So we're expecting that. And so we're yeah. actually going to become stronger and everybody who stays in, they get, you know, their, their assist, their, their rewards will get better. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, we're expect go ahead. Well, that's that whole thing about ownership again. Like mass is basically showing how much ownership you have in our revenue stream. We're only paying out to the people who are staked within the system. And then at, a, at the time of staking, we do have a 25% tax and that goes majority to the different revenue protocols. So mm. it'll help feed our bot, it'll help feed the validators and it'll help feed all our different revenue streams that we build up over time. And it gives a, a that allows us to pay out to the, those people that have decided to contribute with us right. and have an ownership in the protocol. And, and you mentioned some taxes. And, and I think that was one of the things that I found interesting from our conversation previously. So let's run through like from buy sell tax to staking tax to unstaking tax. Like what does all that stuff look like? So the buy tax is set to 15% because we really want to collect everything up front to begin with and put that towards the revenue stream. So as soon as you're in and you're participating within our ecosystem, we want to make sure that we have is we have we've been able to collect that and put that towards our bot and get that working for our the community. Um, then staking tax is going to be 25% and that's going to be largely again because now you're becoming an ownership into the revenue stream that everyone else is contributing to. And then sell will be 5%. So okay. we're kind of doing it a little bit backwards and Sergey right. will kind of tell you why he, why he designed it that way. But right. another really cool feature is we have 0% transfer fees. 
So you can transfer Fathom with no no penalties. Okay. So here's the thing, the main reason we, or especially I was like, you know, we need to, to do the higher buy tax, right? So let's say you're in a, you, you get into a project and they're like, hey, look, we have 0% buy tax, you know, no barriers for entry. So you get in, but then they're like, ah, you know, we've, if you want to leave though, there's a 10% tax. They're collecting that tax a lot of times for marketing. Mm -hmm. And I, this is so backwards. So they're actually basically saying, hey, jump in our protocol but we're not going to actually improve our system until you leave. Hmm. And what, like, how does that work? It, it doesn't. So what we're saying is you're going to, you're going to come into our system and we're going to receive the funds we need to support your investment from the start. If you want to then get the rewards, you're going to further invest in us so we can further support the rewards. We're going to pay out to you. And right. Yeah, it's totally backwards from what's out there, but I think they're just, doing it the backwards way <laughs> i'm curious i'm curious because just thinking about it right so if i on launch day let's say i don't get in on the pre-sale i find out about you guys a couple days later um i buy i buy a bunch of um, tokens i'm taxed 15 percent. i also want to stake them so i'm then taxed another 25 percent. so how are you guys going to to combat that right like right off the jump i'm down 40 percent well, it's 36 and a quarter percent because it's okay. It's 25 percent of the 85 percent that's left. Okay. Got um, yeah, so right. just, yeah, just yeah. to clean on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, I mean, so if you're looking, if you're staking, that means you're looking to receive the rewards. Um, if you're looking to just go get, you know, for a short period of time, it's going to mm -hmm. be hard to combat that. Um, but the whole point is that, that, that tax, that extra staking tax, you know, we need, we need to focus on revenue. So we need to constantly be growing that as fast as possible so that in the future, when normally we would be dying because buy volume has stopped. And even though you could still be staked, if you're like me and you hold everything on for dear life, you know, hodl until it's worth nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what we're trying to prevent is that we'll never be at the point where your stake, no matter how long you stay, becomes worth nothing. So yeah, it is a bit of a steep tax, but I want you to also think about there's other protocols out there that when you stake your tokens, you can never unstake them. They don't call it a tax, but it's basically a hundred percent tax. Yeah. So we're only taking 36 and a quarter percent. And a lot of times those stake tokens might go to the rewards pool to be given back out. So they're not even using it to support the system overall like we are. And how how is the, let's just say the buy tax, how's that? um split like what portion of that is going to what so all the taxes that we receive rather than trying to say you know five percent of the buy tax goes to this and eight or whatever but 75 percent of everything we receive is going to go to generate revenue okay because that's that's our focus the other 25 percent is going to our devops and that'll handle everything it takes to run the protocol because there are expenses involved as well as marketing and everything else but I don't know if you've seen other ones that were, especially that were token based. Like uh, one of the first ones we saw was it was based around crypto miners. This is over a year ago and they had 11% tax. I think 4% went to crypto miners. And my yeah. first thought was, well, that's not enough. Why are they only doing 4%? That's their lifeline. That's their long-term sustainability. And right. only 4% of it is going towards that. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> right, right, right. Well, it definitely, it definitely gives you insight on what the intentions of, of the team is, right? So like if, if, if that's the case, then surely you have to assume that a large portion of whatever tax is going to be allocated towards the team, whether that's in team tokens uh, based on tokenomics, or if that's, like I said, like, you know, based on buy sell tax, um, so it's definitely good to, to see that. And you said that you said that you have multiple streams of revenue, right? I know you mentioned miners. Uh, oh no, did you mention uh, sorry validators and then uh, yes. and then bots as well? Yeah. yeah so, so we started out as looking at miners when we were first building it, but then we quickly saw how inefficient that was going to be, and you know Ethereum was going to be where we're at now today and, and merged. So we we started looking at. Uh, the validators, which is at what the Ethereum is after the merge. It now works with validators. It's basically the same thing as a miner, but works for proof of stake tokens mm -hmm. and coins. 
and it's it's not as high a play as like something like a bot or something but it is a great backbone and right now as we're in the bear market and we're able to scoop all these up our returns are going to be exponentially better once the market returns to its normal standards sure and then and then when regards to the bots can you guys go into detail on, on what that because look it's obviously bots are 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 really the the hyped up type of protocols right now in the DeFi and space that's um, our most exciting announcement we just we're able to confirm that we do have our own bot. We are going through our network connections. And it's now official. We do have access to a high-end uh, trading bot, and we're going to hopefully be getting someone to set that up and run for us here very shortly before we even launch. Okay. So, cool. Uh, that would be hopefully something that we can connect with the taxes as well because the presale, right, coming in. So before we before we touch on the on the presale. Um, I think that there were some other things that that uh, that I wanted to cover because I know we talked tokenomics a little bit, but we didn't really touch on the fact that your guys' token is is um, it has like a, a cap supply, right? So you have what is that number again? One billion. Okay, so you have a, a one million total supply. For, one billion. Sorry, one billion. with a B. Yeah, with yeah. A B. yeah. Uh, no worries. And then, right, and then and then. You said half of that is allocated to the rewards pool at launch yes okay so i mean that's that's i mean that's one of the things that when you guys first told me that just seems kind of interesting because like i said i've, I've never even i've never even heard of anybody uh doing that way the, the typical way that they go is just by inflating their own supply and then rebasing to to holders now i know that you guys mentioned that you wanted to do like one percent a day um ideally but what happens if your mechanisms in which you generate revenue can't afford to pay out that one percent a day is there um a function within the smart contract that you could change those parameters or or help me understand there yeah so the everything in our system is adjustable because i'm mean, just from experience and watching everybody else if you can't adjust it you're essentially eventually going to have to relaunch once you figure out a better or, or how it should be so yeah, with those, um, the waves which are sent out, you know, they're current, they will be set for every 15 minutes and based on that 1% value when we launch. But again, it's a percentage of the pool every 15 minutes. So we can move that percentage up and down as needed. Um, whether we want to, if we need to, you know, drop it down a little bit for sustainability, we also have it there to generate hype. Because mm -hmm. something I've also seen is, like the one project where we met in, it was a 2% reflection token. And even after they announced they were gonna to go to a V2 to add staking, nothing happened. But then when they went from 2% reflections to 8% reflections, a lot a lot of buying happened. And then they furthered it to 11% reflections and they wound up hitting a, a new all time high, <laughs> wow. which was like 6X from where they started it. And so that yeah. kind of caught my attention going, oh, okay increasing rewards generates hype because let's face it why does somebody buy into something it's because of hype <laughs> yeah you know now what what happens when if 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 you're in a situation where that rewards pool runs dry well it can't because we're only we're sending a percentage out every 15 minutes okay so as the rewards pool shrinks the number of tokens sent out shrinks also okay so yeah unless we actually set it to 100 percent, which would be the the dumbest thing in the world right. it'll never go to zero and that and and that that is kind of like the use case also which you mentioned briefly but now it makes a little bit more sense of mass and um how that gives you kind of an overall view of um like i guess your expenses that you're paying out right yeah <laughs> it's exactly what it is yeah that's uh that's very cool. And at some point we'll get to the point where revenue in will equal payments out. It could take months, year, we don't know how long it would you know take to get to that point. Um, but that would be basically the absolute floor in our system. But again, when it comes to tokens, there's so much more that generates or that creates the floor, which hype is one of them. And we have many ways, we have several different ways to generate hype in our own system. We built those in because again, 
you know, hype, hype is what brings people in. So we can up the rewards and start a marketing campaign about, hey, you know, we were 1%, now we're sending out 3.5% per day or something for yeah. this period of time. And that'll catch a lot of attention, especially, like you said, that 36% ta tax, you know, if we did that for, say, like 4% over a month, you're getting that 36% back pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like okay, so... Let's uh, I, I know we talked a little bit about uh, a pre-sale or kind of what that's going to look like for you, but let's dive into that and, and how all that's going to be handled and kind of like the, the benefits or the perks to, to getting in this pre-sale. Okay. So one of the biggest perks is there's no tax for the pre-sale. So up front, we normally have the 15% buying, 25% staking. There's not going to be any tax for our pre-sale. So what you'll buy in and get a 100% of your investment. And you will be staked. Everybody will be staked at launch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so that's what's really cool. You're missing. You don't even have to worry about that 30, what, 36 percent tax. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, typically, like one thing that I always hate to see is is you have like a good project that has potential to do well. Um, they end up having this huge pre-sale and then uh, regardless of the tax or tokenomics, like you just see a massive dip. So it's like, is there things that you guys intend on doing to, to kind of like prevent a big sell off after, uh, after you guys go live? We absolutely do. Uh, first off, our, uh, we have, so we have this staking our uh, basically an eight day vesting system called the ripples. Mm -hmm. And the way it works is every two days, uh, it changes. So the first two days, all tokens are locked. The next two days, it's a 75% tax to unstake. The next two is 50%. The final two is 25%. After eight days, there is no fee to unstake your tokens. So what this means for our launch is um, everybody will be staked just beforehand. So when we launch, there is not a single pre-sale token that can be sold for at least two full days. Right. So we're essentially, no matter how much money we raise in the pre-sale, it's going to be just like a fair launch. Yeah, and I think that I think that that's a very interesting component. Like for one, it makes it like super fair for everyone, but also like it takes way more of the risk out of it um, than like joining a, a typical presale where where all bets are off as soon as the token launches, right? Uh, so right. that's cool. So after eight days, you'll be able to unstake all your rewards, but during those eight days since you or like if you buy into the pre-sale right mm -hmm. uh your tokens will already be staked at launch so you're already correct uh, collecting those rewards um throughout those yes. eight days like since you can't unstake right yes and wait there's more so right. <laughs> because everybody is staked and mm -hmm. nobody can sell right away we're not going to use all of our raised liquidity for our launch okay we're only going to probably use about 20 percent of what we raise for liquidity in the liquidity pool when we launch and what this gives us the power to do um is we're expecting no matter how well the protocol is working even how much revenue we co have coming in we're expecting after those eight days to have a massive unstaking and selling because that's what normally happens why would it not happen with us right so by only utilizing 20 percent of raised liquidity if we set, say, the floor at, at launch price, right, um, instead of trying to maintain the floor, we're going to use um, another strategy, which I'm calling um, the floor recovery strategy. So basically, though, the way the math works is it, if we let it drop to 50% below launch price, we can bring it back to launch price 13 different times. As opposed to, as opposed to something like, um what opt3 was doing and trying to maintain their floor or like yeah. their th theoretical floor by um by buying into sells and selling into buys and stuff like that and you're using so much liquidity um that it gets to a point where it becomes very very challenging once things do go wrong right so what you're saying yeah. is that what you guys would do is let kind of like um the, like the, the sellers or paper hands kind of shake out and then you'd be able to recover the price back to your theoretical floor, right? Rather than spending all that liquidity trying to struggle and keep it at a set price. 
Yes. And um, yeah, and that's and that's the plan at this point um, to again to protect all the investors fr from that dreaded pre-sale dump, mm. which most of them happen right away. So ours is at right. least at the very minimum, uh, it's going to be several days in. And the other cool part about this whole thing with that ripple tax, those taxes that are collected are going right to the rewards pool. They're not getting sold against the chart. And so what we could very well see is, you know, we'll launch with 500 million tokens in the ocean rewards pool. But after that second day and people can unstake, even with the 75% tax, if we're up a lot, you know, like let's just say 40X, which is kind of a ridiculous number, but unstaking and selling, if we're up 40X, even with that 75% tax, it's still a 10X increase right. for and, right. and there's going to be people who want to do that they'll do it if we're up five or eight x you know and you'll to get a two x or something right. Like right right so we're expecting so, that and that'll just it grow the rewards pool okay yeah 75 so percent you know, those tokens all go there so do you do you guys have um a launch price in mind or does that need to be calculated once you see how much you've raised yeah because we're gonna have a open uh we're not gonna have a hard cap during the pre-sale because um so the the launch price which should be a minimum of zero zero two five okay um based on what the soft cap is set for and stuff um around there um <clears throat> but the reason because we want to raise as much as we can during the pre-sale because aside from not using all the money for liquidity 50 percent of what we raise is going to go to start generating earning revenue from the beginning right so we will have a ton of money already in there and that's part of the reason and that's like we don't have that tax coming out because the point of taxes is to raise funds right so we're raising the funds in the pre-sale so we don't need to pull that 36 percent out right yeah exactly no that that makes total sense plus two if if people choose to unstake early um <laughs> then that like on day two right they're subject to already a pretty hefty tax obviously that comes down as time progresses but um how are like if if i were to unstake two days in um get taxed 75 percent how where does that money go does that go right to uh like the the revenue generation pool or no again the unstaking tax those go right back into the ocean rewards pool okay Got we're it. not <laughs> because we actually had this discussion early on i was actually thinking we were going to collect them and sell them and I remember calling Bishop. I was like, dude, we can't we can't sell these tokens because we could see if we're up a lot, we could see a massive unstaking. And now we're going to have massive selling on our own chart because of the, what we collected. So right. rather right. than creating all that red there, we're just going to send them right back to the ocean so they can be given out. Right. And that increases the size of the rewards pool. So more tokens are going to be sent out every single wave. So everybody's rewards increase. Plus, they'll be receiving dividend reflections. So rewards increase also from that. Yep. So again, the, the dividend reflections are the reflections from the mass tokens yes. from uh, from people selling, right? Or people unstaking. Correct. Okay, cool. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about audit and, and KYC. Where where do you guys stand on that? And what does that look like for you guys? We'll begin the KYC with our partners, Truth Seekers. That's right. Yeah. So they'll be fully conducting our KYC. Okay. And, and is that, is that, um, are they doing an audit too on your guys' contract? Yes. We've okay. already actually gotten one audit for security to make sure there wasn't any like back doors or anything through, um, through Solidity Finance. Okay. And our plan was always to get a second one because this system is so complicated. Mm -hmm. And so Truth Seekers is going to be handling that second one. Cool. Yeah. I love, I mean, I love to hear that. I like what they're doing. So, um, Cool. When do you, do you guys have like a launch timeline in, in <clears throat> mind or, or what does that look? Mid month. Um, we're looking around the 18th or so. Um, okay. To be either, you know, have, have the pre-sale going or, or be looking to launch around then. So. Cool. All right. So, I mean, I think, I think that's really all the questions that, I mean, that I had, I think we did a, a pretty good job at giving like a general overview without reading word for word off of uh, off the white paper. But like I said, guys, like the, the white paper is super in depth. I know that that had to have taken you guys a ton of time to, to put together. Right. So, oh, yeah. um, 
I definitely recommend if you're watching this after we finish this video or after you finish the video, definitely go check out um, the white paper for Fathom. Cause like I said, it's super in depth. They have like a whole glossary. It's all hyperlinked, which is cool. So, uh, so yeah. Um, but I believe you guys had something that you wanted to, uh, to share, like kind of like a demo of the DAP and kind of run us through that. Yeah. So um, I, I'm, I'm always testing everything to make sure it's operating properly. And actually I found a recent, after our first audit and the corrections happened, something in the corrections, I guess, that we were told, suggested to do for efficiency reasons, actually kind of made one little quirk in it, which is, being fixed right now or actually i think it's already done they're, they're just making sure it did work yeah um but yeah i can demo this yeah i can share my screen i guess right here yep should be able to all right so let me make sure this works sweet all right there we are um so yeah so this is our d app um it is live currently on testnet not all of this data is correct like none of this stuff actually is correct i mean they actually had to upgrade our smart contracts to be able to pull all the information that we wanted off of there. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> no, I was like, what's going on, guys? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we had to rewrite some stuff. I was like, ugh. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is one wallet. It's been staked for about 14 days, So, which means we're outside of the Ripple tags, which is actually very exciting. And you're getting to be to do the first demonstration of this one. Cool. Um, so <clears throat> because we're value-based... There's a there's basically what a side effect that we realized was gonna be able to happen, which mean which is you know when your the value of your tokens is higher than your amount of mass you have, you can actually unstake and then restake and reset the amount of mass that, that you have, basically lock in a new level of rewards at um, a different price, correct? Yeah. So okay. if I were to restake or unstake and restake, I'm actually gonna end up with. 4,200 and change mass as opposed to the 1125 I currently have. Right. Um, so this, I'm going to do a live demonstration on this. Let's just pray that testnet works because sometimes it doesn't always. Well, first off, you know, so, I mean, this is our, our treasure chest. Like I said, you know, it's the branding is all uh, nautical. So we have the ocean, which is a large pool. Sure. Like it is on the earth, right? And waves are going from the ocean to land masses. That's how, you know, our reward delivery system works. <clears throat> so it actually does make sense. It's kind of confusing at first, but it totally makes sense based on real life applications. Sure. So I am going to go ahead and unstake everything. Um, so actually 983, that's the mass I started with. Okay. And actually, I currently have 1125, so I've already received a bunch of reflections. Um, all right. Unstake amount cannot. Don't be telling me that. Oh, that's right. That's right. Let's pray because this sometimes does not. Testnet is weird. It's very annoying. It is. Like, I've, I've used it a couple of times for a couple of different things, and man, it was a nightmare. Uh, there have been times I'm like, guys, oh my gosh, it's not working. It's saying this. They go, uh, refresh and try again. And then yeah. I would, or try 30 minutes later and be fine. Yeah. All right. Unstaking is successful. Let's go back to our dashboard. So the one thing that happened after audit and stuff, actually, for some reason, the reflected mass is not unstaking, but they've already corrected it and they're retesting it. Okay. So that will be corrected once we go live, which was corrected in October. And then that's why I said maybe something that was considered to be inefficient was actually fixing this. So that will be ready to go. All right. So now let's pretend this will be zero in this case. But so now we've got four, almost 4,500 tokens. So now we're going to go back to stable stake and stake our tokens. I just want to get, I want to get the best rewards I can. So I'm going to hit maximum. So I have a, I have a question. So let's say, Let's say I buy and stake on a dip mm -hmm. and then the price hits all time high. And, and what you're saying, right, is that the value of my tokens would outweigh the amount of mass that I had, right? So if mm -hmm. I were to unstake and then restake, I would now have more mass tokens because the, the token is at a higher price. Now, yes. is that, am I still subjected to that 25% stake tax every time or is it just that first time? Yes. So the stake tax 
um, will happen because right now you had 1,100 masks in this scenario, and now you're going to have over 4,000 masks. Right. Um, so we have to be able to support the the higher amount that we're sending out to you. Got it. In Got order, it. you know, so if, if we didn't take that tax, eventually we wouldn't be at all sustainable. Yeah, this 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 really provides some um, some very unique game theory as well. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> it really is. Um, actually, I guess probably another one of your buddies who does YouTube, he was asking, you know, actually during our AMA, he's like, wow, there's a lot of strategies. I was like, yes, <laughs> there are. And I don't know them all. Right, right. He, was, he was asking today. He's like, you should don't do worry. Like, people will figure it out for sure. Well, I know. He's like today. He's like, well, you should do like a short thing on 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 uh, strategies. And I was like, well, maybe we'll just make a channel in the discord. And as people come up with ones, uh, yeah, there's many different ways to do this. So, yeah, by the way, the calculations in this whole system in, in testnet are way off for some reason. That is not correct. This should not be thirty nine hundred and twenty six ninety seven. I can go look at the. Uh, let's go look at the activity on this, though. It's one thing that drives me nuts about this. So yeah, the 70 million, it, it captures the value before it takes out the tax because at one point it was backwards and uh, had to get that corrected. But I think because of the way testnet, uh, I'm not sure where they're pulling the values from. Like even like this value will be different from this value here. So testnet's kind of messed up. Yeah. Even when it comes to like the assets, just the this shows the Binance Smart Chain price for BNB, but Testnet's price is like four hundred and five bucks. Right. Well, I, I'm just I'm but, just glad to see a, a project that has like a working DAP on Testnet prior, to, like w like way prior to to even launching. Right. Typically, it's that's not the case. Right. Um, <laughs> right. So very very cool. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to go through on here? Um, over, I mean, that was the one thing I wanted to show as, yeah. as you know, the unstaking. And well, I think, I think that, and, I think that that gives us, at least did for me, like seeing it kind of gave me a better understanding of how like the relation of fathom and, and mass works. Like, obviously I know that they, they like one is a dividend tracking token. One is the, the token that you're actually buying. Um, but this kind of gives you a, a unique look at, um, at, at how that works. And like I said, like trying to think about different types of strategies that you might deploy when you guys, right. uh, when you guys go live. So very, very interesting. And the way you can, I think you actually mentioned this, you can look at this as two different bags. So you've got your bag of tokens, which are mm -hmm. going to have a value and that will change with the token price. But then, and this, this is not supposed to be fathom that'll get corrected, but then you have this bag of mass. Um, the value of that doesn't change because it's, com it's basically set to the stable coin of BUSD. Right. But because of reflections, you know, this represents the value of your current stake. And the value of your current stake is only going to go up as other people leave the system. Right. Because you get reflected based on your holdings. <laughs> you get right? those reflections. Right. And uh, I'm surprised nobody else has done this before. But so this whole system, and it's, it's interesting because you can look at some systems and realize it was a developer that was like, oh, you know what? This could be cool. This will, and then they decide it's going to bring hype. And like, I've seen some projects where they're launching with like five different tokens. Oh, well, yeah, you buy this token, then you buy this one and you put it here and you add this liquidity and you stake this one here. And like, I started watching one and I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. Why is it so damn complicated? Our system is just a token with a staking system. But then what happens in the, in the way we calculate the rewards is really what's different. But, you know, this value only goes up. And it doesn't mean that your rewards are always going to be, you know, the, the value of your rewards coming in will always be a set amount. Mm -hmm. Because as mass increases, everybody's value, you know, rewards decrease a little bit. As so the price go goes up of the token, actually, the value of your treasure goes up because it's all, you know, based on that. But what this really means is, so, you know, I, I put in $980 unstaked with had a 1200 or 1100 and something. But right now you would have to come in and spend more than $2,700 to get better rewards than me. Yeah. And that's true. Even if 
the token loses 90% of its value, which in every other system, if it drops that much, I only have to put in 10% of what you put in to equal the rewards. And what, what I really like about this is that your rewards are not dependent on the current price of the Fathom token, which is crazy. And uh, that's, that's one of the biggest things that um, I think that you guys offer, right? Is that you don't have to worry, you know, because one thing, for instance, you, you jump into a project, you stake tokens, the token dumps, right? And then now you're, you get caught holding the bag. Now you're, now you have to unstake and there's probably unstake tax. And, uh, and then now like, I need to go sell my tokens right. or, or like something happens in the middle of the night, you wake up in the morning and then the, the price is dipped. Well, that doesn't really matter. Right. If you're already staked, like, sure. That could matter if <clears throat> say you were sleeping in, the, the price pumped and then came back down, right? You might be a little upset because you missed right. out on, on being able to to make make up some more mass tokens there. Uh, but that's one thing that's that's super unique. And, I, and I'm, I'm super excited to, to see how this works and, and unfolds. I'm definitely going to be playing uh, close attention for sure. And again, you can go to the D app and get some testnet BNB mm-hmm. and connect to it and stuff. Um, so this is, I'm giving you a little insider information on this. Uh, so this is the the staking ocean. So this is the ocean contract. Mm-hmm. Um, this is just the read functions here. But yeah, so right now uh, the decimals, well, this is 10,000. So this is 0.0058% currently being sent out of the pool every 15 minutes. And then mm-hmm. the slot time, that's that's in seconds. So that's that equals 15 minutes. Yep. And again, those can all be changed. I did have, uh, yeah, there we go. This is one from earlier. <clears throat> so like I was saying about the, the ocean rewards pool so this is the ocean contract which is the biggest holder of us so currently there's 540 million tokens held in this contract this started with 500 million right and i did after i had bought some and after two days i unstaked and you can actually see oh that was that's zero there's gonna be in okay there we go so this was <laughs> This received almost seven and a half million and a little over seven and a half million. So this was one wallet I actually unstaked in two different unstakes. And so that was that tax. And this wound up being after, I think, five days. So this was like a 50% tax. But yeah, so these 14 or 15 million tokens got sent to the ocean rewards pool. So this was like 520 something million tokens. And immediately after, did I capture that? Let's see here. Okay, so twenty six one seven five. That was every. That was a fifteen minute uh, reward because this only sends out the rewards when something actually happens in the contract. Because then that that covers the gas fees. Mm-hmm. So after those went in, it sent out that twenty six thousand one hundred seventy five. I think I had one. Yes. Yeah, so before that, it was sending out twenty five thousand four hundred sixty three. So right there, the the number of tokens sent out during the wave increased decent amount you know right is, that's that's to account for the uh the mass reflections that, that no, the other holders we got right that was just to account for the fact that these 15 million tokens were sent here and this rewards pool was larger and we sent out a, the same percentage of this rewards pool because we didn't change it at that point okay got it okay so yeah the, yeah, the pool was bigger and uh uh, made that you know, it just sent them out, sent out more tokens because somebody unstaked at this point in this scenario at um after five days, right? So it made it essentially deflationary <laughs> until, of course, until those tokens are given out, right? Right. But, so this actually leads to a fun fact that we could actually become deflationary in the first few days after launch. Yes, because if people <laughs> unstake in the first, uh, you know, two to six days after the time lock, um. <laughs> all those tokens that are being sent to the rewards pool could actually outnumber the amount that we're giving out and just as it has here. Right. Yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty crazy to think about. So uh, yeah. And, and you know, it's great to be deflationary. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and that's our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is we'll be buying more than what we're giving out yeah. and we'll, we'll get there eventually. Hmm. Yep, exactly. So this is um, actually right to the mass contract here. So 
you this and this is the staking contract. So like truth seekers, it act, I think it's called S Truth. So their 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 dividend token is called S Truth. Okay. Uh, but again, they don't talk about it because it doesn't really matter. Right. Um, the whirlpool that is in our our system or that's in the white paper. That's actually this one here. Um, I did finally set it up and I used our initialized stake function, which is what we use to at launch so that everybody is staked at launch. And so right now there, that's the largest holder of, of mass. So that's actually receiving the most rewards, which will be the case at launch anyways. Okay. Um, but that's here, but yeah, then this actually can show you who are the, the largest, um, not, well, not whales, but you know, so right now the, the whirlpool is essentially like a continent because it's the largest holder of mass, right. it's the largest land mass. And then, you know, we've got, I don't know, we, we haven't fully figured out how to, how to play with this, you know, but essentially you could be a whale or you could be a certain size creature based on how many fathom you have, but then you're going to, you could be something else based on the number of mass you have. Yeah, that's very true. Someone, yeah. So it's, we're going to have a lot of fun with it too, because we, we like community engagement and uh, you know, it's, if it's boring, then nobody's going to pay attention. So we want to, yeah, we want to keep this exciting in, in many different ways. Right. And, and I think, <clears throat> I think the, the last question I have before we hop off on here, kind of to, to bring it back to what I was talking about in the beginning, just how your guys's white paper is so long that <laughs> I wonder how you guys plan on, on overcoming like some of that stuff, right? Because surely there's going to be people, I mean, there's always people that are just going to blindly ape in, but um, how do you plan on addressing like that group of people where the, they get into the white paper and like, I don't even know what this means. It doesn't make sense to me. Right. Well, stuff like this, right. Cause you're, you know, you're, you're pointing to things that you, you feel are important to you which is going to be some other than we were trying to discuss if we just came out with it. Um, and the truth is we've probably spent more on our white paper than most projects spend on the <laughs> entire project before yeah. they launch. Yeah. And it's that alone is hard to fathom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, yeah, we've got, oh gosh, so many, I, I can't even tell you how many hours we did, but the, anybody in our discord that has the OG label, they've been around for about a year. Okay. And we put them to through the ringer, going through that white paper line by line, because a lot of this stuff, you know, what do we call our rewards? Is it value-based rewards? Is it state? You know, we didn't, we didn't have, a, there was no term to just say, this is what we're doing. So we had to define everything. And that's okay. probably why our thing is so long. So and, we, is, and we are doing other things too. We will have Fathom Academy coming out here shortly. Cool. There'll be different videos okay. broken down into different parts. So it'll, hopefully help with you know keep people engaged and keep learning something slowly because it, it takes a few times to go through but once it clicks it really clicks for people um and also we do have videos out that are like two and a half minutes long and kind of run through basically the the very important parts it's a bit technical of a video but at least it's something better than nothing cool well what what i will go ahead and do is leave the links to not only your guys' Discord, but your website as well. So that way people could check it out and then be able to um, to get in the Discord, check out the white paper, ask the questions, uh, do the research that everybody's supposed to do. Um, but yeah, guys, other than that, I, I just want to say thank you so much. I know that this is kind of getting lengthy now, but we're, we're just about an hour, at an hour. Um, but I do want to say thank you guys so much for, for coming on, um, taking some time out of your day. Um, I'm looking forward to <clears throat> the launch of your guys' project, and well, I'm sure you guys are as well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I'll be definitely paying very, very close attention and uh, plan to get in that uh, that essentially a fair launch, right? But yeah, yeah, it's been I guess 14 and a half months at this point since we really started working on this, so we haven't rushed it. We've taken our time. We've had delays that were out of our control, but yeah, we're excited about it. But again, you know, we just want to make sure this is perfect. Cool. And so we're doing everything we can. So thank you though, for having us too. Thank yeah. you very much for taking yeah. your time out of your day and, <clears throat> and helping other people kind of digest this a little bit more with us cool. and jump into discord. If you have any questions or you don't want to read too long, didn't read. 
<laughs> right, right. Absolutely. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and end it right here.